we said e is the formula, s equals r, okay, that s is the arc length, okay, s is the arc length, r is the radius, and theta is our central angle, but we got to remember to put it in radians. So let me label this picture. S is talking about the length of this arc, but it's talking about linear measure. I know it's a little confusing because we just talked about central angles having the same <clears throat> angle measurement as the arc, and that's true, but now we're talking about the linear measurement, so inches, feet, meters, things like that. Um, we've got our radius, and this would be our thing. So let's start with an application problem. Okay. Find the perimeter of a 60 degree slice of a large pizza. We're going to assume that a large pizza is a 14 inch pizza with a 7 inch radius. <clears throat> so, if we're finding the perimeter of this slice, we've got to know what measurements. What do we need? No, we don't need the area. Okay, we need the arc length. We also need the length of the sides, right? Perimeter would be the length of all the way around. So we got two straight sides. We're going to assume that the pizza cutter is a perfectionist and actually cuts this correctly. So what's the measurement of the sides of our pizza slice? No, just the sides of our pizza slice. Seven. Okay, these are both seven inches. All right, we've got to find the length of the crust there. Okay, that's where the arc length comes into play. It's a 60 degree slice of pizza, but we gotta do a little work. We gotta convert our degrees to radians. So that's pi over three radians. So our arc here is the radius seven times pi over three. So the length of our crust is approximately 7.33 inches. Is that our final answer? No. The perimeter. How do we find the total perimeter of this piece of pizza? Okay, we need to add 14 to that because that's just the length of the crust. We need to add the length of the sides. So 21.33 inches is the perimeter of our piece of pizza. I already will plug pi in it. Because the sides are just seven inches. <clears throat> okay, now let's just do a few just regular plug and chug equations here. Uh, not application, but just S equals R theta. Just to make sure we've got uh, a grip on our formula here. S equals R theta. So we're finding the length of the arc. S equals the radius times the theta. In this first example, theta is in radians. So it's just a matter of multiplying it out. Typically, I don't like to multiply out the pi, but if it says round to the nearest tenth, that means multiply out the pi. So 34 point, uh, 31.4, and you should always have units with your arc length because it is a linear measurement you need to indicate the units so the radius is in inches the arc is in inches okay sometimes if it's in degrees to begin with you have to start by converting it to radians okay don't forget that part so simplify the 200 over 180 10 pi over 9. So our arc S equals 2 times 10 pi over 9. Six point nine eight one meters. Don't ask me why I rounded that one differently than the first one I just did. Huh? No. Okay, that's a good question. 
Your calculator does not need to be in radian mode for these problems, just because we're dealing with radian measures. The only time the mode matters is when we're graphing trig functions and when we're actually plugging something into sine or cosine. Okay, so when I type in sine of 20, I don't put a symbol beside the 20, so that's why the mode of my calculator matters. If I type it in right now, I'm in radian mode, so my calculator is interpreting that as 20 radians. But if I change my mode to degree, then it's going to interpret it as 20 degrees, which 20 degrees and 20 radians we learned yesterday are very different, um, so we get a different answer. Usually the answers are more distinct than that, but you get a different answer based on the mode. The mode is telling it, when I plug this into a trig function, this is the type of angle that I'm plugging in. Okay? It doesn't matter when you're just multiplying numbers. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Uh, one more here. Okay, It's already in radians, so we're good to go. We can just do 15 times pi over 11. And so that's approximately 4.284 yards. Okay. Um, there was something I was going to say. Yeah, I want it. What to do with back here? I want it. I can't remember, but uh, I was going to say here, make sure that your answers make sense, okay? When you get these answers, make sure that they make sense in the context of the problem. So like this one, part C, the radius is 15 yards. We're talking about a proportion, a portion of the circumference, but pi over 11, that's a really small angle, okay? Pi over 11 is a really small angle, so you're not talking about much of the circumference. So it makes sense that our answer is smaller than our radius. Excuse me, however, on like part B, 200 degrees, that's more than half of your circle. Uh, so it makes sense that our answer is bigger than our radius. And then the same thing with part A, pi pi over 4. <clears throat> pi pi over 4 is more than half of your circle because pi would be half of our circle. Um, so five fourths is just a little bit bigger than one pi, uh, and then eight inches it has a much bigger radius, so it makes sense that that answer is a little bit bigger. But I say that to point out on like B, if you forgot to convert that to radians, you would just do two times two hundred. Four hundred does not make sense. Four hundred meters for that portion of the, the circumference isn't even four hundred meters. Okay. Uh, so use that to, to kind of check yourself when you're doing these problems, just to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. Okay? You can use this formula. I didn't have any of these problems, but you can use this formula to find any of these three pieces. Okay? So in the examples we did, we were given the radius and the radius, or the angle. Um, but you could be given the arc length and the radius and asked what the angle is. What would we do in that case? Divide. The arc length divided by the radius would give us the uh, angle in radius. Uh, same thing if we were given the arc length and the angle, we could find the radius by dividing. Okay, so I think y'all like knew that pretty quickly. I just want to make sure, I just want to point it out. But it doesn't always have to be the r and the theta that you're given. You could be given the arc length and asked to find something else. Okay?